Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show on this Friday, Friday the 30th of July 2021. Thank you for tuning in. Glad to have you guys here today. Now, what I want to talk about, well, I want to get the chart started right here. Uh, whoop. Right here. <laughs> okay, we got the chart started. Um, U.S. Senate reaches a $1.2 trillion infrastructure spending deal. Evidently, they've come to the table. They've worked in a bipartisan way. Uh, Republicans in the United States Senate have reached a deal with the Democrats over a uh, outstanding issues in the $1.2 trillion infrastructure package that plays a key part in President Joe Biden's agenda. A Democratic Senator uh, uh, Kirsten... S S uh, Republican Senator Rob Portman, the two lead negotiators in the Congressional Chamber, told reporters on the Capitol on Wednesday that the agreement had been reached. So they've reached an agreement on $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan. You know, roads in America, actually roads in all of North America, Canada should have an infrastructure deal too. Roads in all of North America are in, de in deplorable shape. Not just roads, but our electrical grid. You know, they need to proof our electrical grid now against electromagnetic disturbances. You know, back, uh, there was an event that happened back in the 1800s called the Carrington event. Back then, all they had was telegraph lines across the United States. And it basically fried the telegraph lines. If we got such an event today, it would take our electrical grid down. There's these big giant transformers and things that they can't replace quickly. They need to harden our electrical system against the solar flares that can come at the earth, you know. And they need to improve our electrical system. So that the grid won't go down at, at, at things like what happened in Texas, you know, when we had that ice storm, you know. Uh, I think this would be a great idea, but it, it would require more money than $1.2 trillion, you know, to do all the things that need to be done. Uh, things like our highway system and everything. Seems to me $1.2 trillion, all that's going to do is maintain the system. It's not going to really do that much probably to actually improve the system and make it better. You know, the Chinese had the right idea after the great financial crisis. They went through and they really, really worked on their on their infrastructure within China. Infrastructure is very important. <clears throat> Nothing moves. Everything, that, if you're eating dinner right now, watching my show, infrastructure got that plate to your table. So... Anyway, they've passed the deal. $1.2 trillion is better than nothing. But when you're going to spread that out all over the entire United States, it's really not that much, you know. But it will maintain the system more than likely. So keep it'll keep that plate on your table. Uh, trucks have to go down these highways, you know. And the highways get in too deplorable a condition, they'll break their axle. <laughs> Trying to get trying to get that dinner plate to the table. Anyway, let's move on and take a look at the silver price today. It's up four cents today at twenty five fifty two. But what's most notable here is that it's holding its gains that it made. And that's very important. That it doesn't slip back. Let's take a look at gold now. Gold today is at eighteen twenty-two. It's down five dollars and seventy cents, but it hasn't really lost its gains it made, even though it's down five dollars and seventy cents. If it doesn't go too much lower, then it might start to lose its lose its gains. Uh, but it's not hasn't lost its gains so far. Uh, fingers crossed. Okay, let's move on to cryptocurrency today. Fifteen hundred and thirty-eight billions with a Bitcoin price of $39,058. It's been touching the $40,000 mark for Bitcoin. Uh, so cryptocurrency is holding its gains very, very similar to gold. It made the gains around the same time. and So the gold and silver, and, and they're holding their gains right now. 
Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 116 points on the day at 20, 34,968. I think this market is exhausted unless it can actually get more money to start to come into the system. So any sign that the money it does have coming in is going to diminish, then the market will turn down. So the Fed, you know, they... Uh, they had a meeting on Wednesday and they uh, talked about what they're going to do and they're very dovish and that's what's keeping this market up in the 34,000 range is a dovish Fed you know Fed has to be very careful what they say now because the market could turn downwards in a big way you know if the Fed Basically, if they were to try to tighten or anything like that, monetary policy. And, you know, they're talking about tightening in, in a couple years from now. It's only going to be worse then. Harder to tighten then than it is now. The system will be even more over leveraged two years from now than it is now. Uh, there's not a snowball's chance in hell <laughs> that they're going to be able to uh, to tighten and get away with it. Ever. Basically, this they're going to have to keep loose monetary policy. And they're even going to have to loosen it more instead of tighten. They're going to have to stimulate more to keep these markets from, from, from falling. Because the system has become so over leveraged, it's unbelievable. It wants to deflate so bad. How do you keep it inflated? It's going to take ever and ever more increasing amounts of of of, of uh, just print or go burr to keep it, just to keep it. They've lost it basically. Uh, right now we've got stagflation going on like crazy. We've got uh, disinflation. We've got, you know, I'm going to tell you guys, people out there, they're running out of money to spend at the same prime prices are going up. you got the worst of both worlds right now. It's all, every, everything's only going to get worse. Uh, the banks are not lending money like they used to. And that's, how, that's one of the biggest money creation tools out there. And the central bank has taken up the slack on all of that. It's what's holding everything together. The only thing that's holding this whole system together right now is the central banks. And they're just basically putting it on their tab or their balance sheet. What kind of a system is that? It's an unstable system that's getting ready for a crack up. That's what it is. Okay, let's take a look now at uh, crude oil at 73.74, uh, and it's up 12 cents on the day, or what's that, 16%. Move index today, 62.08, and uh, the move index, it was climbing, it was up to 70, touched 70, now it's back down to 62.08, but uh, it reflects this instability. This move index is a window into the credit markets. You can see what the credit markets are doing. And, uh, the higher the move index goes, the more unstable the credit markets are. This is why they were, the move index shot up over 100. And this is why they had to open up the uh, repo facility. Uh, this is Now they've made the repo facilities uh, uh, a permanent fixture within the financial system. Bonds and rates, what we're seeing is fallen yields. We're looking at four basis points on the 10-year. Uh, it's at 1.22, and we're looking at the 30-year at 1.8. What is it, 1.88? Uh, it's down 2.9 basis points. So we got some movement on the long end of the yield curve. It's, it's falling again today. Uh, part of this, part of the reason why this is happening is, is the government hasn't passed a deal yet on the extending the debt ceiling. And so the creation of new treasuries is, is just kind of like on hold a little bit. 
and uh, what they're using is a Treasury General General account to run the to run the system, and that's good until about October, around more or less, around somewhere around October, before that runs out. And so they've got to get something passed through, and no doubt they will get something passed through, some new deal, and then the, then the Treasuries will start pumping out again. Of course, whenever you got more of something coming into the marketplace, generally it's going to affect yields. It'll probably affect yields. And so we probably see rising yields after the government passes a new new deal uh, with their, with extending and pretending, you know. So we'll probably see uh, treasuries bounce back a little bit again. But the system can't withstand a high treasury yield. Like the 10-year, uh, right now the system is getting so it can't withstand, um, it barely withstand 2% now. But if we wait six months or a year from now, it won't even withstand 1.5%. And there's a time coming where it won't, won't, it won't be able to withstand anything except zero on the 10-year. We got probably, the only way they can maintain the system ultimately is we're looking at negative rates coming. But in order to get negative rates in, if they're going to go substantially negative, they're going to have to move over to a digital currency if they get substantially negative rates. Uh, negative rates are the weirdest things. I don't fully understand the effect of, of, of negative rates uh, on the banking system and things because it's, it's weird. If you can think about half, and if you lend somebody money and you're going to have to pay them money to hold your money, well, that sounds like a great deal for the borrowers, you know, but the thing is, is how does that actually work? I mean, right now, we're not fully negative on these rates. Like the U.S. 10 years still paying 1.23% per year, but a negative yielding U.S. 10 year would pay less than zero. That means that you're going to pay them to hold your money. This is backwards from the way things have run all the way through history. And it's hard to get a comprehension of the, of the, of the spin-offs of that, of, of how that even functions, because it's so ass backwards. Anyway, let's move on. Let's take a look now at uh, the dollar index. 92.15, and the dollar index is creeping upwards today a little bit. Thank you guys for listening to my show. Like and subscribe, you know, and uh, you guys have a great afternoon. Bye-bye.